Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are doing great. I hope you had a really good Easter weekend if that's what you celebrate. I actually purchased a new camera this past weekend, hence the different kind of image that you're seeing. It could be just a little bit better. You know how I keep saying that life is a walking? Well, that walking is where we learn really important things on the way. Life is about the journey, it's about the things that we learn, it's about the things that we unlearn. It's super easy to get caught up in this kind of conundrum of that everything's going wrong, your life's a mess, you can't get on your feet, everything has just completely collapsed. This can be especially true when life kind of starts for you. Once you leave the comfort of high school, and I'm not saying that everyone's experience at high school is easy either, anywhere we are in our development's going to be challenging when we're children. We're scared of the dark and that fear can be just as bad as say our partner dying from cancer. But as you develop over time and you expose yourself to certain things that you're afraid of, you start to build resilience. You start to learn things about yourself. You start to realize how strong you are. So when we're in that really bad dark void, that place can be such an opportunity to learn so many things about ourselves. It's what we like to call shadow work. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the things that I've personally learned from going to hell and back. Human beings are seriously complex in the way that perhaps our parents brought us up. You know, they may have made so many mistakes along the way because that's pretty normal. We don't always get things right. And some of those things could be pretty outdated. And as a result could result in traumas or other kinds of issues that then we later come to realize as we're adults. I do believe this is seriously nuanced. Of course, there are so many things that can happen in a life that can contribute to ill mental health and other issues that we experience. But one thing I have learned about my own personal accountability and responsibility of my own mental health and my addictions is that you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink. I'm really good at self-reflection so all through my life when I've had these certain issues that have come up for me I've been able to reflect on them and kind of point out where I've had issues and what I feel that I should be responsible for. However when it comes to practice it's not always easy. I've had addiction to alcohol. I've had suicidal ideation. I've been in this place called respite for suicidal ideation. There was one moment where I felt like I could have OD'd on benzodiazepines. That's when my life was pretty much at its most rock bottom. I knew I had certain issues and while I would be at the water, there would be moments where I wouldn't want to drink or I felt like so much of a victim in my life that I couldn't drink, that I chose not to do that. But I never got better because of it. And I guess what I had come to learn over time, especially this year, is that I'm responsible for my happiness. I'm responsible for getting better. And that doesn't always mean I'm gonna have good days, obviously not. There have been so many times that I've slipped up. There have been so many times where I've locked myself in the bedroom for a week, especially over lockdowns, because I find them incredibly difficult. And I would feel sorry for myself in that moment, but I would pull myself up by the bootstraps and go, okay, let's try again next week. Let's focus on healing because I deserve to, because I deserve to give myself that. Once you are dependent on yourself and you deserve happiness, you deserve to be the one to give yourself that love, light, and healing. Drinking from the water or not drinking from the water is a choice that you make every single day. There could be days where you choose not to and other days where you do. But those moments where you're truly responsible for yourself and you have that understanding that you are your best friend, that you are the most important person in your life, those moments are where you should feel proud of yourself because you're making progress. And it doesn't matter if you kind of slip back because you're gonna get back on the horse again and drink from the water. I feel so much happier and content within myself when I'm spending a lot of time away from social media, such as when I'm in my garden or I go visit family and I put the device down and really be in the moment in my reality. 
I'm no stranger of posting something and then getting a dopamine hit from all the likes I'd get. I think we've all fallen into that trap. But obviously that kind of sentiment can become addictive. We wind up seeking validation from others in order to make ourselves feel good. We seek validation from others. We do so because we want to be able to fit in. No one wants to feel like a reject and when you're on social media and you are not getting any likes on your posts or you're not having anyone interact with you, you can wind up feeling quite rejected and thus it can contribute to poor mental health. This is also true in our social groups where we try to impress others, we try to make an impact so that we are accepted, so that we feel valued. When my mental health was really bad a few years ago, it was because I felt like I wasn't adding anything to society or my communities or anything. I felt really directionless and purposeless. I had no friends, very little creative outlet. I was stuck in the home a lot, feeling really isolated as a stay-at-home parent. And on the contrary, my husband, he was getting many gigs. He had a very thriving social life and I wound up feeling really jealous of that. I was seeking some kind of refuge within others. I was seeking some kind of validation from a community where I felt like I wanted to be needed and valued. And while that sentiment is fine in itself, we all need to feel like we are valued, that we are loved, and that we have something to contribute for the greater good. However, one really important thing that I have learned, and this is especially true, once I got off social media and got in the garden and started growing vegetables, when I started looking at all the insects along the footpath, when I'd go walk my kids to school, where I'd save little stranded bees where they needed sugar water to get back to their hives. When I found the connection to all things again, all my relations, my connection to God, is where I realized I do not need validation from anything outside of myself. As I said, we are the most important people in our lives. We need to take care of number one. And no one is going to do that for us. If we continue to seek validation elsewhere, we are codependent on how others see us. One thing I love about approaching my 30s and what I've learned through my 20s of this whole seeking validation from others and blah, 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 is that whoever you are, whatever you believe in, how you feel about yourself, who you are aspiring to be, overrides anybody else's opinion and validation of you. Clearly, you should feel this way with discernment. You should be able to practice self-reflection and realize certain mistakes you're making. Your behavior may be hurting others. Perhaps your behavior may be negatively impacting your community. But admitting to that doesn't make you any less of a sovereign being. Admitting to that, in fact, makes you a critical thinker. It means that you're humble enough to admit where your mistakes are. As we're on the topic of social media and the negativity that it can have on our lives, it's really important to be mindful of what you are consuming. This could be through the likes of how we use technology, what we put into our bodies and who we surround ourselves with. It could be the activities in which we engage in. Are you gaming too much? Are you taking drugs? Are you eating food that does not nourish your body? Are you finding that you're attracted to these things because they fill a void? That's one thing that I personally notice. Through my addictions that I've had, through social media use, and that seeking of validation, of course, because that goes hand in hand with it, is that I was looking to fill a void. I was looking to fill something inside from outside of myself. This did not work for me. It made me depressed because when I did not have that thing, then I had nothing. What I found that really helped my mental health was when I would give to others, when I would give back, when I would give to the earth. For example, 
the garden. I really love going back to the garden because doing something so simple, such as growing a plant, even if you have no intention of using that plant, you're just planting that plant and helping to nurture life. Something so simple can really fill you up and make you feel good. That's why I'm wanting to start beekeeping because I realize how important bees are for pollinating the planet. And I want to be able to assist with that. It feels like I am adding value. When you feel like you add value where you can help, where you can be responsible for things, it makes you feel like you're worth something, but that worth doesn't come from an outside perspective. It's how you feel about yourself. I've also mentioned on this channel about corn growing and that sentiment has come from Grandfather Whitebeard. He would often ask me in life, does it grow your corn? And he could be referring to certain social groups or activities that I'd involve myself in or social media use, for example. And if it doesn't grow your corn, leave that behind and find something which does grow your corn. Again, it's such a simple concept, but when you put an analogy to it, it really does make sense. Another really big thing I wound up letting go of was my ego. And as an INFP, I felt almost too proud of who I was. I felt like in a way I was righteous above others because of my personality type. And while I didn't like to box myself in, at the same time, I felt that it was getting to my head a little bit too much. It's important to realize that we can always learn something new from our environment and from others, that it's okay that we don't know everything. We're not supposed to. As I said, life is a journey. We learn things on the way. This society that we live in, everyone has an opinion. And social media is given everybody a platform in order to speak what they think, which isn't always a bad thing. I mean, it's how you use social media that really counts. But in doing so, people have become very self-righteous within what they think within their ideologies, within their beliefs, without putting themselves into a situation where they welcome challenge, where they welcome a learning opportunity. I notice that many people, when they're expressing their opinion and entering a conversation, that they do so to talk at the other person rather than engage in discourse. When you engage in discourse, you're there to learn something and be open to the other person's perspective and likewise be able to express yourself so the other person can in turn return that favor. I think a big issue is that people feel entitled. They feel entitled because they can't bring down their own ego and practice any kind of self-reflection that they feel that there is nothing left to learn and that rather than being a student of life that they are the master of life, that they are the one with all of the answers and there's nothing left to learn. None of us have all of the answers. Humanity is completely flawed. And many of us try to make it right. The beauty of humanity is that because we're such communal kinds of beings that when others learn something and we learn something that we can share, we can share the things that we've learned on the way and share our wisdom because that's what it ends up becoming. Knowledge plus experience equals wisdom, but you don't become wise by being the only one who talks in a conversation. You become wise by listening by assuming the other person may know something that you don't. I know that probably one in every four of you, according to statistics, probably do suffer from mental health issues. And I just wanna ask, what have you learned about yourself through your suffering? Have you learned anything that is worth being able to comfort others with? Have you feel that you've gained certain kinds of wisdom for what you've been going through. Please let me know in the comments below. But for now, I hope you guys have a really good day, night, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you guys all again for the next video. Bye.